Melanie Knight here. I'm so excited to be invited by Magalie Gregoire from Back to the Sea Society to be part of this awesome Shell and Tell program and to do today's Shell and Tell. I am very excited to introduce you to the incredible green urchin. Isn't it awesome? This is a mounted version. I normally don't have that many shells around because I have the policy that I want to leave only footprints and take only photos, right? So don't take the shells, leave them on the beach. But I do have this very special mounted version that I got from a friend of mine in Newfoundland. So this is a sea urchin test or shell. And it's really beautiful when you look at it up close. But what's amazing is that you would normally never see an animal looking like this because this is an animal that has lost all of its spikes. So you would, this normally looks like a big spiky ball and those spikes help keep its predators away because would you wanna take a big mouthful of a big spiky ball? No, neither do fish or other predators. And so it keeps these long spikes uh, to keep predators away, but then when it dies, it loses those spikes and it creates this beautiful pattern. So what you're looking at here in the middle is actually its bum, okay, bum. And then you can, can you see this five star shape on it? Whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay, so that is like this star shape, just like a sea star, because this is related to a sea star. The sea star and the sea urchin are cousins. Isn't that awesome? So just like a sea star has five stars, at five arms, this animal here does too, and only this is kind of like a puffed up version, and all of its arms are in one case. This star shape, what it's actually showing you is where its spikes normally come out, but it's also showing you its gills because it breathes through its back. I'm not sure if you can see, ooh, pretty close, but in between there are these tiny little holes and that's actually where it takes water into its body. A lot of people think that this is uh, where they take water in, but actually it's through all the tiny little pores uh, throughout their shell and they take the water in and then that's what helps them move their little feet. Sea stars and sea urchins both use these tiny little suction cups that help them hold on to the rocks underneath and it helps them hold on to their food and it sometimes helps them hold on to uh, things around them. Sometimes it helps them take little pieces of shell or little pieces of stone and it puts it on top of their head. It's really cute. Little tiny shells that they'll sometimes use to help ex add some extra protection. These are little holes are uh, what makes the special design and the spikes, the little white spikes are where the spike, where the long spines would normally attach. Isn't that cool? So beautiful. I just love it. I just love it. Anyway, so uh, we've covered the bum. We've covered the spikes and the five star shape. That is called pentaradial symmetry, if you're interested. We have bilateral symmetry, which means that if you were to cut us in half, we have two equal sides down the center. But if you were to cut this guy into equal parts, you'd have to cut it five times, which means that it's pentaradial. So penta meaning five and radial meaning in a circle. So five parts. Cool. Another fun fact about sea urchins is that they have a really long scientific name. So the common name for it is called a sea urchin, but the scientific name is actually for this particular one, the green sea urchin, is called, ready? I'm going to mess this up. It's called the Strongylocentrotus drobachiensis. Strongylocentrotus drobachiensis. So where does it live? So sea urchins are pretty common all over the world. They are in almost every ocean, I believe. This one in particular was found in Newfoundland, just like the ones that would be found uh, in Nova Scotian waters too. So what does it eat and how does it eat? Okay, so this animal is green and so therefore so is its food. Not every animal is the same color as its food, but in this case it is. And so these guys here, they love to eat kelp. And how they eat that kelp is they cruise along the bottom using those suction cups we already talked about. And it has these five really sharp teeth. So just like I was saying how it has this five shape, just like a sea star on the bottom, which you can't really see. So again, this is its bum, but on the very bottom opposite side is its mouth. And it has these five sharp white teeth that look like a star. If you were to flip over an urchin, you could see it's five white teeth that kind of come to a point. And it just chomps away on the rocks at the kelp and the algae that grow on the rocks. So it's a vegetarian. Anyone else a vegetarian? Cool. So what eats them? So these guys are normally have long spikes to defend against their predators. But what happens if some animals are actually adapted to get past those big long spines? Because inside there's some really yummy food in there. There is an awesome animal that lives in Atlantic waters called the Atlantic wolffish. And the wolffish is this awesome, big, long, gnarly fish that has this really big head and this long, slithery body, kind of like a, an eel. 
but it's actually a fish, don't be confused. So the this awesome fish has these really huge teeth that are specifically designed to eat urchins. They have teeth on the roof of their mouth. So if you take your tongue and rub it up against the roof of your mouth, pretty soft up there, right? But on the roof of a, of a wolf fish's mouth, it has teeth and like almost molars on the top and an extra row that helps them chomp into this spiky sea urchin without hurting its mouth. Isn't that awesome? Uh, on the west coast here in, in uh, Pacific waters, sea otters love to eat urchins and what they do to get past those big spiky spines is they dive down to the bottom of the ocean, they grab onto a rock, they bring it up to the surface and then they smash open the urchin with the rock and then they get what's inside. What's inside is their delicious uni or their gonads, which is ultimately the organs in their body that help them have babies. And if you've ever seen uni on the menu, that's what this and that's what they're coming from, an animal that looks like this. Sea urchin is very highly sought after in many cultures. So there are people who will go out and harvest for these sea urchins in order to supply them to seafood restaurants. What else can I tell you about? Oh, okay, one other fun fact is that these sea urchins are also related, not only to sea stars, but also to sand dollars. If you've ever seen a sand dollar on the beach, you will notice, if you look really closely, it also has this five star shape on the back, and that's because they're also cousins. They also have this five, uh, five part body plan. And so if you think about an, a sand dollar, it's pretty much just a squished sea urchin. Only the spikes are really, really tiny and short, and this, the, all of this part is just kind of squished down. Generally, this guy has a lot of cousins and really interesting family of animals that are all part of the echinoderm family. Again, another fun fact for you, another big word. Echinoderm means spiky skin, and all of these animals, sea stars, sea urchins, um, sand dollars, and sea cucumbers all have spiky skin. They also all have this pentaradial symmetry. They all have five key parts, and they also all have two feet that help them move around. So that is my shell and tell for you today. I hope that it's informative. I hope that this is cool. I hope you learned something. Please leave a comment below if you yourself have ever seen a sea urchin, or if you really like eating uni, or if you have any other questions about it's this animal or any of its cousins. Let me know, and uh, I wish you all the best. Have a great day, guys. Thanks so much for joining us. Bye! <laughs>